Hi everyone, welcome to another Hatton's live stream showing you some of the best locomotives available on the market today. This morning we're taking a look at the Hatton's Originals Southeastern Chatham Railway P-Class 060 tank locomotives. So I'll be giving you a little bit of the history behind the real life locomotives, some of the really fine details of how this model operates and looks as well. And if you do have any questions, please do ask them in the chat and I'll answer them throughout the stream. So taking a closer look at the history there, and the P-Class really was the South Eastern Chatham Railway's answer to the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway Terrier locomotives. The first two were built in 1909, and as per the Terriers, built 30 years earlier, they were originally intended to be used on passenger services in the southeast of England. However, six more were commissioned about the same time that they found that the design was actually quite underpowered for those passenger services. Even though they were a quite smaller locomotive compared to the Terrier, which is a small loco in itself, they could only manage 73% of the power output. So even when working with the smaller four-wheel coaches that were around on the network at the time, they just didn't quite have enough power to handle those passenger services. So by 1910, a further six had been built and there was now eight of the class in existence. And they were redeployed pretty quickly. The little bit of lack of power for the passenger services that they didn't have made them absolutely fantastic for working around shunting sidings. The really small design and the small wheelbase as well made them perfect for shunting dockyards. So they really found a great new duty at this time during the early 1910s. Two of the locomotives actually helped out in the war effort as well, with two being paid to the new railway operating division livery, being shipped to northern France in 1915. Once the yard had been set up there, again, it happens again, history repeats itself, they were found to be a little bit underpowered and they were returned to England in late 1916 and replaced by, I believe it's a couple of T-class locomotives, which had a little bit more grunt, shall we say. So, heading through the history then, all eight survived into Southern Railway ownership in 1923. They were used on lightly laid branch lines, dockyards and in sidings as well. And remarkably, all eight actually lasted into British Railways history as well, coming in in the nationalisation in 1948. The first one started to be withdrawn in 1955. They were all gone by 1961. But incredibly, for a class of eight small locomotives, four still survive to this day, with three preserved at the Bluebell Railway and one preserved at the Kentony Sussex Railway as well. So I can see we've already had some fantastic questions coming through there. Thank you very much for joining us, everyone. And I'll let you get a closer look at the model there while I show some of your questions. This is number 27 in the original fully lined out Southeastern Chatham Railway Green. It's got a full line in there as on the running plate as well as the tanks and the cab. You'll also just about see the full lining on the steam reverser the full piping there to the handrails, the polished brass dome and safety valve. Quite a lot of details there. As you can see, I'll just bring it round and show you the full painted cab interior. For such a small locomotive, they really do have quite an open cab as well. They're absolutely fantastic to fit a pair of crew to. SLD 51 there saying the SECR livery is gorgeous. And of course, this isn't only appropriate for those of you who are pre-grouping modelers. It's also a great model if you model preserved eras too, as there is locomotives in this livery in preservation today. I believe 178 at the Bluebell Railway is currently in this fully ornate SECR livery. So this is just one that I've got on my screen here. And Samuel, I think we've got an agreement there. Samuel, it's my favourite livery. I think it's one of mine as well. I think um, Guy up there asked which was my favourite. And, well, you can see it on the screen here now, Guy. This is a, a really fantastic livery. We've gone to town on the printing here, shall we say. You can see the fully gold leaf lettering there as well and the numbers. These locomotives, even for small... At, at the time, they were shunting engines, but they were built as passenger locomotives. But they really did go to town on the livery. As with a lot of pre-grouping locomotives, you really get the ornate colour schemes there. 
But there's a lot of different colours available, as you can see right in front of me. If we start over on your left, we've got Primrose, which is in the Bluebell Railway livery from the 1960s. One of the first full-size steam locomotives to operate in preservation right back in 1961, I believe. So quite a bit of time ago now. 31556 in the BR Early Crest Black. So great for you early 1950s modellers. Another example, number 178 in the Southeastern Chatham livery again. Another Southeastern Chatham livery. We do three of these in total. And that is number 27 again for you. 323 was the only locomotive to get the Lake Crest livery before it was withdrawn. So if you want to pair this up with Southern Railway Electrics, Bullied Pacifics, all your modern, well, modern Southern, Ra Southern Region locos, that's the P-Class for you. And finally, the two locomotives that we covered previously in the Railway Operating Division, World War I livery there that went and operated in France as part of the war effort as well. So some great questions coming through about the tech specs now. Would the P-Class pull as much as the Hornby Terrier? Now, you've got a five-pole motor in there, guys. So you've got a full-level detail. You've got the die-cast chassis in there as well. In real life, these could handle around three or four bogey coaches, but the models we've had up to about six or seven on our test track, so they can easily outhaul the real-life locomotives, and they can match really well with the Hornby Terrier in the haulage capacity. Nathan's asked a detailed question there. What's the shed code on the early BR one? I'll just check that for you while I've got 27 going round. It is 75A, and I couldn't tell you what that is. It's, I know it's not Stuart's Lane, but they were based pretty far and wide across the south of England in the BR and Southern days there so you can get them across a diff couple of different depots either in the suburbs of london or heading into the south of england and there again up on onwards always mentions always love the pre-grouping liveries such such detail in them as well alexander asking do we do a blue bell railway livery version we do a couple i'll just bring you back to the the main camera We've got Primrose here, which is in the original style livery that was applied in 1961, around in that colour on the Bluebell Railway in the 1960s. We have previously done a Bluebell Railway blue version as well. However, that is out of stock now, but does come up from time to time on our pre owned department. So do check out that and check out the link in the description for more information on the models we have now and the models that have sold out as well. So going back into those tech specs for you, you've got a six pin digital socket in there. We recommend our own six pin direct decoder, which is a really easy fit. There's two screws at each end of the chassis and then the body just lifts away. Although as ever, be careful with that amount of pipe work on there. It's pretty easy to break something. So just make sure you're a little bit gentle with these locomotives. You've got the NEM couplings front and rear. You've got sprung buffers as well take a closer look at the detailing pack you have southern railway and southern region route indicator discs that you can hang to the front of the locomotives they are made out of brass you've got a selection of pipe work there including steam heat bags and vacuum brake pipes you've also got replacement couplings for the front the full screw link couplings and also with the southeastern chatham versions you do get replacement buffers as well replicating the original bottle style buffers We've chosen to fit the models as they come out of the box with the preserve style later buffers. And there are actually three different buffer toolings catered for across the class. And the main difference that you might quite not be able to see on the camera, but I do recommend that you have a closer look on the photos on our website, is there is actually two different styles of tooling as well. The first two locomotives built in 1909 were built with higher tanks and higher cabs. And it is noticeable. I believe it's only about five or six inches in real life. But when you do have two models together, five, five, seven, five, three and five, oh, two, seven, are two of the big and the small. And it really is noticeable. And we've got a really high detailed picture of that on the website. If you do want to see the difference, Chris, if you put in crew inside, there is a full guide on how to remove the body. It's not removing the cab roof, but it is putting them onto the chassis. So you'll take the body away and put your crew on. That's all contained in the guide that you get with the locomotive. You've got a full guide there on how to digital fit. 
and also put in crew, add the detailing, where to add it from our detailing pack previously mentioned, and some hints and tips on servicing the locos as well. For those of you that are digital sound fans, there is space for a sugar cube speaker in one of the tanks as well. Some of you may be able to squeeze in a little bit of a larger speaker into the cab, should you wish, but we have put space in the tanks for the speaker and the decoder as well. Craig, now with these being mainly southeastern locomotives, you might think that the northeast isn't the greatest place for them. However, if you are modelling the preserved era up there in the northeast, number, I believe it was 178, went up there a couple of years ago to work on the Tanfield Railway, which it really didn't look out of place either, even in that ornate southeastern Chatham livery. So they have spread the wings in preservation. I believe a number of them have worked throughout the Midlands and onto the Seven Valley Railway as well. So even if you're not a modeler from the southeast of England, you've got a great excuse to get one of these on a more modern layout. And we are getting a couple of requests through for deliveries coming back that we have sold out of. Ben Davis there mentioning the Pride of Sussex that has now sold out. If you've got any particular requests for future liveries, it may be something that we consider in the future. Please do send any ideas through to ideas at hattons.co.uk and they go straight through to our development team. Up on and onwards, the coal load is removable. There is a little bit of a weight underneath it, but you can take it out of there. When you've removed the body, it pops out and you can put a fully authentic coal load in there should you wish. But a couple of questions regarding the minimum radius. Now, officially, it's second. We have tried them down to first and they do perform OK. But as ever, we'd always recommend second if you have got second radius to hand. But with them being such a small wheelbase, as you can see here on the camera, they will be able to get through some of the smaller curves without any issues. The locomotive I've got on the screen here now and those I've got on the desk in front of me are all available right now as well. They come in at £99, which for a loco with all this detail pre-fitted, including the lamp irons, the vacuum brake pipes, NEM couplings, full steps, piping, etc., etc., is it's a bit of a bargain, to be honest, really. And with the fully ornate livery that you see there with so much lining on it, especially for such a small locomotive, you'd think this lining would suit a huge passenger engine, but... Back in the pre-grouping days, they really did dollop all their engines to this quality. So you can see the, see the full finish there as well with the Indian red frames. You get a selection of details to fit afterwards. But as always, I've taken this model straight out of the box and put it onto my camera here for you. So everything you can see is how you would open the box yourself and get the details there. So there we go. I mentioned that the Tanfield Railway did have one of these particular locomotives visiting as well. So you get a fully comprehensive package. We've covered the instructions. We've covered the detailing pack. You get a nice sturdy foam lined box as well. If you are transporting it, you won't have any issues there. Obviously, we don't recommend dropping the box, but if you do, it will, you know, survive, survive a bit of a drop as well. But some really great excuses to get one of these locomotives onto your layout. The SCCR versions will look great with our forthcoming Genesis coaches in the southeastern Chatham livery. Not only for the guys who are genuinely modelling the Edwardian era for these locomotives, but great for those of you who are modelling preserved railways too. Bringing them right through into the later BR and Southern Railway eras as well. You can have one of these pottering around a depot if you've got some really large bullied Pacifics or maybe Hornby's Lord Nelson too. They'll look great and a really good size comparison of a locomotive that's this small compared to a bullied that works out about three times the length. It is a great, great comparison to have. If you've got a small dockyard shunting layout, they're ideal for that. Maybe alongside Helgen's 07, Dapol's B4 as well. There's a huge amount of locomotives in double O gauge to pair these up with, guys. It's a really great opportunity. And even if you don't have a Southern Railway layout, it's hard to resist some of the ornate liveries that these locomotives carry. I'll just give you one more look there at number 27 so you can really take in all that lining there. Up on and onwards mentioning that they make a very charming station pilot and they certainly did in real life as well. They did perform that duty for quite a few years 
And if you're modeling the very early days of the locomotives, you will, of course, get them on the passenger coaches, as they should have been too. I believe they were actually made to work auto trains very early in the life, similar to the Great Western Railway 14XX. So if you wanted to do a bit of push and pull operation, you certainly could do that as well. And that's the point I'm really trying to make here, guys. The possibilities with these, for a class of eight locomotives, you wouldn't think there was much history. You'd think they'd be quite obscure. you think they would have disappeared through, through the cracks and fallen out of the history books. But it's really quite the opposite. They have made a name for themselves in preservation. They've been roving ambassadors for the Bluebell Railway and the Kent of East Sussex as well in the ornate liveries. And some have carried the BR liveries too in preservation. So really capturing the sort of plucky design that these are. They've had a lot of different duties over the lifetimes as well. Some really great opportunities to pair them up with models that are no doubt already in your collection as well. And again, one last question regarding the liveries there. If you do have any livery suggestions for future runs, it is something we are considering. So do pass that through to ideas at hattons.co.uk if you want to see one of these eight locomotives in a particular livery on a model in the future. Otherwise, hope you've really enjoyed today's session. Hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about the Southeastern and Chatham Railway P-Class, some of its history, and maybe I've inspired you to pick up one of these models and fit it into your collection as well. All the details are available on the link in the description. You'll find the prices, some more of the instructions, some really up close and personal photos, and a couple of formation guides there too, to inspire you to get modeling with one of these locomotives. Otherwise, hope you've enjoyed the stream. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like our Facebook page for more streams like this and great model railway content as well. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.